Hey guys, we are doing our garden tour right now. Before it gets, you know, well into the hundreds, I think we're supposed to hit 107 on Wednesday this week or Thursday or something, which is absolutely ridiculous. We wanted to come out here and film. It's like 95 right now, still terrible, but I wanted to come out and show you guys everything. Cosmos are starting to fizzle out a little bit, but there are plenty of buds still coming through and these have been absolutely amazing the bumblebees have been enjoying it the honeybees have been enjoying it um so yeah let's start the garden tour um these are our cosmos we just threw seeds down a couple months ago probably like two months ago and this is what they're doing there's all kinds of really beautiful ones and then right behind that this is the first year that this thing is actually doing anything. We planted this, this was just a little stick. This is a October glory maple tree and it is finally like putting on some real growth this year. Then as we come down this way, these are just some pansies and our arborvita that we've had. And I think I'm gonna end up keeping this combo, love it, by the arbor over here. This is our massive butterfly bush. Um, I'm not sure the variety on it. It was one that I just picked up at a small garden center and it has been full of white buds and they just started to really crisp up. So I'll probably go back and kind of deadhead this some and keep it in check because it's starting to really grow into our driveway here. Down this way, so right here we have some oxalis. It's starting to turn a little green. It usually is a very dark purple color. I think it's getting too much light up here, so we'll probably end up having to move it, but the pot is cracked, so it's got a little bit of a lean to it. And then back here is our plum tree. We just picked all of the plums off of this tree that we could reach. The blue jays were going after it like crazy. And they would eat like two bites out of a piece of fruit and then leave it for dead. So we tried to get as much of the fruit off as possible. I still see more that the jays have gotten to, so I guess we're just gonna leave those ones. Then coming this way, this is kind of new to us. This is where we've been selling excess plants that we have, things that we've started from seed, things that we've started from bulbs in here. And this is all just a self-pay um, garden stand. We have people that come by all the time. We don't have like hours per se for it. It's, you know, we leave it out. And it's been really good so far. We've met some really cool people. And it's just this one wall in the driveway here. We have things that are free. We have, everything's got a price tag on it. Things are super cheap here. Um, but we have loved doing this. We've been able to meet some really cool people. Um, we'll just peek in here on this side before we finish that. But this is our Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum by Proven Winners. This is four plants. And we have cut it back multiple times because it has just gone absolutely crazy as you can see it's like spilling out into the driveway right here but this has been an amazing plant this we planted last last spring so it's actually been in the ground for a full year now which i'm surprised it didn't die back but in the winter we threw some sheets over it and it got protected so then if we come down this way this is where we are starting a bunch of our plants. We have peonies, dahlias, lilies, snapdragons, cosmos, all kinds of different stuff over here. And then coming through the gate, the AC is on, so the fan is going a little bit. But back this way over here, we have sunflowers. We had another one. The wind took it and it snapped. And then we had hops growing up the trellis that's right here and it was absolutely glorious and then we had spider mites so we cut it back to the ground i've got some diatomaceous earth on it and this is the growth that it's put on in a couple weeks um and i'm gonna try and really stay on top of it and then this is a snowball viburnum that i also might be noticing for the first time some spider mite damage so i've never dealt with spider mites in the garden so this is the first year that we're dealing with this and i'm just now noticing it on this viburnum so I'm, we're gonna get on top of that after this video on this side total work in progress i've got a budlia some borage um some ajuga some uh, grasses in here and that's it pretty much that we've really got this really pretty iris too i guess these like black and like yellow um spots on them those are super pretty. 
so to show you guys what it looks like when you have spider mite damage and i know it's spider mite damage because we had it on the hops if you look closely you will see the speckling on the leaves on each leaf and it's where these little microscopic spiders are sucking the sap out of the plant and you can't even see them they're on the underside but you can't see them without a microscope but they're there and they are pulling um, sap out of the plant and killing it and eventually they if they pull enough out they will kill the entire plant um, so that's why getting on top of that is super important so it's good that we did a garden tour because I've just kind of been walking past it. So then if we come over this way, this is our fountain area and we have one of our David Austin roses that I'm letting it form its rose hips. I want to see what color they are. Um, I don't have any roses that actually perform with rose hips, but they all get beautiful blooms. Obviously this one was. This is, I believe, the Desdemona. And then... If we come this way, we have a climbing iceberg rose that I have staked up, um, purple fountain grass, and then some diachondra silver falls. We've had this silver falls right here for probably three years now, and it's one of my absolute faves. Um, this is what that purple oxalis in the front yard is supposed to look like when it gets a little more protection. So it's supposed to be a very dark, dark purple with like lighter purple variegation in it. Um, then coming this way, this is where we hang out pretty much every single day. We have our wall of Arbavita right back here, and we'll eventually be putting up a new fence. Coming back this way, um, I guess let's go this way, and we'll start with this new flower bed that we have. So this is our, like, deep shade flower bed where it gets maybe a little bit of filtered sun just in the morning, but that's it. Um, we have some violas that have just self-seeded in here and I've let them take off. We have ferns, we have some elephant ear, we have hookahs. Back here I have hostas. I have our Japanese maple that we had to move back here because it was somewhere where it was getting a little too much sun and these darker foliage leaves were getting burnt. You can actually see one right here that was getting super burnt. So that's why we moved it back here so it doesn't get burnt anymore. And then um, this is a Japanese anemone that we have with the Japanese maple. And then over on this side, this is our brand new flower bed that we also did. And it has a variety of things. It has some of the proven winners. I can't remember, blue moon punch or something. I don't know. And then we have some coleus back here. And this one is probably one of my new favorites. It's called wasabi and the leaves on it are such a cool shape the like points that it comes to and then the bright bright green that it has i am absolutely in love with how that looks then over on this side we have some dahlias in the ground right here and this is our silver lining rose which is putting on some new woo, some new blooms up here absolutely gorgeous um we have some dalmatian foxglove we have this other dahlia i don't know the variety of it it was just kind of given to us but the dark leaves and the bright orange and yellow blooms on it are so so pretty i can't even like i just can't even with it then we have another we have this is one that's super tunia vista bubblegum right here that we planted last year at the same time that we planted the four in the front. I was gonna do five in the front yard and I decided to do four and I had the one extra, popped it back here and it's done the same thing that the ones up front have done. We have a lilac back here and then we have a white elder tree. We have some mums, some astilbe that are finished blooming. They were a really bright pink, it was so beautiful. Um, then we have another rose here this is the royal jubilee and it looks like it's starting to get a second flush of buds so that's really exciting then we have the wisteria that decided to throw a random bloom we appreciate it and we've been really enjoying this one random bloom <laughs> um then you come this way and this is the aviary that we've got and we talk to these birds every single day they are so freaking cute 
And yeah, we have really enjoyed having this aviary. This was our chicken coop for a while and we just put the roof on it and then we added the birds to it. And, oh my God. Highly recommend having an aviary. So over this way, we've kind of moved a few things. We did a little bit of a shuffle a week ago. Um, so these are the Petra's ball or Petra's wedding ball dahlia. And these are one of my favorite dahlias. I will always be growing these ones. The height on these, like I'm five foot nine and like this one is taller than I am. So that's crazy. Um, so back here we had our Kilmarnock willow and it was just getting lost in this like sea of dahlias because last year the dahlias only came up to about here and this year they're even taller. So we moved the Kilmarnock willow to the other side of the property and we added a espalier apple tree back there which we moved probably 10-15 feet down. So it was 10-15 feet down that way. I cut it back and we moved it back there and I think that that was kind of the right choice for that. Then you come down here and you can see some of our lilies that we have that are getting, they're starting to lose their blooms, but I cannot believe how dark they are, you guys. There was so many blooms on here. It's crazy. Um, stepping on some flocks. Come down this way. Um, right now we're dealing with this tree it has an aphid problem really bad and so everything on this side of the property it's super shiny like you can see the rose right there this is the queen of sweden and if you see how shiny the leaves are on it it's because the aphids are dropping honeydew on um, all of our plants and making everything super sticky it's really gross um we're trying to control it our neighbors actually just cut a bunch of this tree out this is a pecan tree and they get pecan aphids and this is the worst that it's ever been this year. So coming down this way, we have a couple more dahlias over here. I can't remember the variety. We have some, what is this? New Zealand flax and some gladiolas that have started to fizzle out a little bit. You can see the pink one back there. They're like variegated almost. They're like light pink and then the tips of them are super dark. And then coming down this way, this bed is kind of a mess. And I've kind of been ignoring it a little bit just because of this tree. It, I don't know, everything is so sticky and so gross. I don't even want to be in this bed. I don't want to work in this bed. I don't want to put anything pretty in this bed. Um, so I've done very little. So down here though, we've got our two endless summer hydrangeas, which have been doing really well. And I don't know why the blooms are white, but they are. They started out very blue when they first came up and then they went to pink and now they're white. And they're still totally alive. There's still lots of flex in them, um, but I prefer them to be this like creamy white color. Absolutely love that. And then back here we have this trellis that we put up with containers. We've got some sweet potato vine, uh, osteosternum, and a super tunia mini vista of some variety. Um, like I said, this bed is my least favorite bed, and this is also the most established bed in our entire garden our garden we've been here on this property for three years now and this is probably like the second full year that we've been gardening and this bed looks the worst out of all of them and this was the first bed that we put any like plants in our landscape in so i don't know i'm gonna blame this tree <laughs> coming down this way we have another snowball viburnum that does not have spider mites and then we also have a couple little um what are these guys asters no nope, not asters they are i can't remember i'll pop them up then we have a um cafe ole dahlia and we have another one on the other side of the property the other one on the other side of the property struggles or no this one struggles the one on the other side of the property blooms beautifully throughout the year um i don't know and then down here we have a saint john's wart plant and i love this plant i love the uh the like pointy leaves on it and then the yellow blooms that it gets you can see how bright they are and they really pop even from the very back of the property or when we're in the front you can see them all the way back here then obviously we have our willow this is three years old you guys have seen this tree in all of its glory we are obsessed with our willow tree and i would recommend if you have the space to get a willow tree put one in the property Coming down this way, we have 
our containers that I've kind of sort of done. I'm letting the grasses grow this year. Next year I plan on doing different containers with completely different plants. I'm over it. I hate the containers. They're chipping the paint on them. I don't want to paint them though. Um, but I'm just going to let it do its thing this year. Like the Cosmos have fizzled out. The Lantana in that one died. The Lantana in this one's fine. So I don't know. Coming this way though is our other Cosmo patch. And like a week ago, this looked amazing. Now everything's really started. Even just yesterday, it looked amazing, but everything now is starting to really fizzle out, which is fine because it'll just produce seeds and the seeds will just land in the ground down here and even more will come up. Um, we have a rose that was given to us and then we have two birch trees back here that are doing really well. I was kind of scared that we were going to lose them because they came bare root. And then uh, oh, over here, we have some dahlias that I've planted and I'll kind of like lash them to this lattice over here. And we have the Claire Austin climbing rose. And the plan with this is to let it grow up and over this side of the shed and then train a couple of the leaders to go up and over the very front of the shed. And I think that'll just be so magical. Coming in here is the vegetable garden, which if you want to see that, we did a tour of the entire vegetable garden in depth and you can go back and watch that. And then, but you can see the sunflower is absolutely massive right now. And we have probably pulled off, what, 10? We had to move because of the lighting. But if you want to see the vegetable garden tour, it's on our page. It's like two videos back, I believe, maybe three. And, but I want to show you guys the sunflower. We've already harvested like 10 sunflower heads off of this thing. I have no clue what the variety is. It was totally volunteer. Last time we measured it, which was like two weeks ago, it was... 15 feet it was like 15 and a half feet tall absolutely massive and it's definitely grown even more the base of this thing is like a tree i it's like it's massive uh, so we're gonna just continue to harvest sunflowers off of it and enjoy it until it decides to no longer be here with us this is where we moved the kilmarnock willow and honestly i think it's a lot better over here we can see it now because it was over there hidden behind the dahlias and we could see it when the dahlias weren't there but they're so massive and they're up for so much of the season that this just needed to be moved and it kind of like masked the fence a little bit it's really i don't know we like it over here now this is a lot better for us so coming this way though our compost and then we have two more birch trees we really like this oxalis, so we have it planted everywhere. I think we have it like in like four different locations. We actually have it on the other side too, under the lemon tree. Um, and then we have a sweet potato vine. Um, down here we've got hellebores, our birch trees, and then we have some of the black night scabiosa, which is getting its very first bloom. And it's supposed to be a very dark, dark purple, almost black bloom. Then here, this is a Voltex, I think. What's it called? Vitex. Vitex. Yeah. This is a um, Vitex. And the bees are on this all day long. Like, it is insane. It's covered in blooms. This is the second time this season that it's already bloomed. And, like, right now, I can just see one, two, three, four, five, six. I see six honeybees just at a glance on this thing. It's crazy, you guys. Um... Down here, this is a lantana. No, not lantana. This is a verbena. I called it lantana over there too. Yeah. It's verbena. So this is the this is a verbena. The white one that's over in those containers is also a verbena. This is the second year that we've had this one. Then, kind of tucked in in this flower bed, I have a little dahlia down there that gets these purple blooms that was given to us. Um, we have the white king delphinium which has started to flop. I grew it from seed. I probably won't grow it again. It didn't do what I thought it was gonna do. Um, and delphinium is just an annual for us. It's not, it doesn't perennialize. Um, coming down this way though, this is the most beautiful thing on the entire property. These are the cafe au lait dahlias that are doing super well on the property. Like they are a dinner plate dahlia and they are huge you guys so then over here tucked back in there we've got two different varieties of coleus i don't remember the names and then i planted an amaranth behind this dahlia 
Um, it's called Coral Fountain. And last year we did Emerald Fountain and it was so beautiful. But this year all the Emerald Fountain died <laughs> that I started from seed. So I started some more Coral Fountain and I started it a little bit later. And so it's only like a couple inches tall. You can't even see it. But I put it back there. Fingers crossed that it grows up. I'll pop a picture of last year's. And the Coral Fountain has these like bright pink um well not bright pink they're like coral colored tassels that just hang down and i think that would be so beautiful the coral with the cafe ole dahlias down here we have a shasta daisy that's covered in aphids and so i just threw some diatomaceous earth on this guy also um a red bud tree that we have it's doing okay it doesn't like i mean they're such slow growers so it hasn't put on much growth i think it grew maybe like four inches this year at most um down here we have some more japanese anemones and i just noticed before we started filming this that i've got the first set of buds coming up and i cannot wait for this to bloom this is one of my absolute favorites in the garden last year was the japanese anemone blooms this was just covered in them then we have some kind of rubecchia back here and i think that this like cross pollinated between something else because this is not what they looked like last year. And these like long like petals, I don't know what it's doing, but it did not do that last year. And I'm in love with it. It's got these like, like trumpets almost. I don't know if you can see that, but these are really fun. Absolutely am loving those. We have our butterfly bush here, which is also a little bit spent. And then down here, I was deadheading some dahlias down here. This is one of my favorite petunias that I've ever seen. It's not looking like it's a fast grower, but it is like black. So like I've never seen a black plant. They say black doesn't exist, just dark purple. But you guys, this plant is black. So my plan is to propagate this if it's you know, something that I can easily propagate. And I'm gonna be putting this throughout the entire garden. I bought one and then I came home and I was like, oh, I need more of this. I went back, they were all gone. So I'm gonna try and propagate that if I can. Um, over here we have our hydrangea. This is the limelight prime and it's budding up beautifully, starting to bloom. This was a showstopper in the garden last year too. We loved this out of all the hydrangeas that we've ever had in the property this was probably one of the favorite hydrangeas um down there what rows do i have so i just planted these still be down here i let them burn a little bit but then right here we have the alnwick rose um i had to transplant it over here because it wasn't doing well in where i had originally put it which was in the side yard directly behind us it wasn't doing that well so i moved it over here put something that was doing better um and then this is a forsythia we have a hops bush we have um six one two three four five six yeah six different varieties right here of columbine we have yellow and then we have purple and this front yellow one this year it was really weird it sent out red blooms I don't know why, but now they're all yellow. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. But these are also super infested with spider mites. And I have no clue what I'm doing to get rid of spider mites. This is the first year I've ever dealt with them um, in any fashion. And they are on multiple things. So trying to like wrap my head around it. I'm trying everything. Neem oil, horticultural spray. I'm trying insecticidal soap. And now diatomaceous earth to get these guys under control. Because I'm not going to let them decimate my garden. So behind the columbine that's covered in spider mites. Then in this bed. Which is a really deep bed for us. We don't really have any beds that are this deep. Um, but I have. I think this is the lungwort? Moneywort? I don't remember, I'll put the name up. But this is from Little Prince. And the blooms on it are really pretty, really delicate. And I like the icy blue foliage. Um, I have another wasabi coleus right here. And then two other ones. I think this is the Sedona Skies. And I don't remember that one. Um, then right here, I have some amaranth. This is the Love Lies Bleeding. 
and this should get it like this tall it should be like over six feet tall and then it'll start to drape and have really beautiful tassels i'm hoping it really starts to take off here very soon because it's not doing much um then here this is the pugster dwarf butterfly bush and it'll get maybe another foot tall another foot wide um, so it's the perfect little butterfly bush to just kind of tuck in somewhere if you don't have space for a massive one like the one that we have in the front yard or the blue one um, that's behind the camera now. Um, behind the Pugster Dwarf though we have this white um, Rose of Sharon. This is the white chiffon Rose of Sharon and it is so beautiful. The white blooms on it. Let me actually let's focus on this one. This one is even like prettier. This is what they look like when they just open up. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then even as they're starting to become spent, they're still really pretty, bright white color. This thing is gonna get massive. Um, then in front of that, we have a dahlia, and then we have a little quick fire hydrangea, which let me get over here. It's starting to get its first set of blooms. Um, you can see that they're like a white, and like soft pink color and it gets these like giant disc shaped it gets these giant disc shaped blooms and i cannot wait for this one to bloom we haven't seen it bloom in the garden yet i planted it this winter in the garden um then we have some salvia lining the front corner of this bed um and then behind that is this dusty miller which you guys this is insane this was a little six pack from Home Depot, like, that we planted last winter, last spring, I don't even remember, and it's huge. We've been harvesting on it. I've been cutting off all kinds of blooms. We've been using it in floral arrangements to give to people, and it just keeps coming back. We keep cutting on it, so I'm letting it do its thing. I just didn't expect it to get this big. Um, kind of thought I was gonna be able to tuck something else in, but it's fine. Then over here, though, this is one of my absolute favorites. Like you can see this branch that I gotta move. This is the Helen Von Stein lamb's ear and it's covered um, with all the like crap coming from the uh, Dusty Miller, but they're so soft and they're so large and you wouldn't even know, but right tucked in here, there's like a sewer drain and clean out that you can't even see anymore. And I planted it there specifically to hide that. Then right here, I have a little lilac. Um, what's the variety? This is a lilac sensation. Should get quite large and really like be the top story plant. And then underneath that'll be the um, white chiffon rose of Sharon. Then I've tucked in some hookahs, some brunera, hellebores, and then kind of just popped in some little six pack of alyssum throughout the garden. Um, then here I have a cordyline. Let me get out of this bed. We have, <laughs> right here we have a cord line and um, I don't love it, but it's here to stay. I yeah, Brent loves it, I don't love it, but whatever. I'll let him have this one section of the garden where he has an opinion. <laughs> um, but other than that, you guys, this is pretty much the garden tour. Things have just taken off like crazy so far. We're in love with this side of the garden, where we're not having an aphid problem so much. I mean, I have aphids on the Shasta Daisy, but we're not dealing with them raining down all their honeydew. Um, so we sit on this side of the garden, we enjoy this side of the garden, we try to ignore that side just a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be it for this garden tour, you guys. Thanks so much for visiting our garden, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.